So in this video, I want to help you take better pictures of your reptiles and your snakes. And let me give you a little bit of history about where I came from in photography. I started with my first real semi-pro setup back in 1987. <laughs> That's right, and way back in the 80s. This is before computers, before cell phones, before digital cameras. I was taking pictures with film, black and white and color. And when I first started in photography, I was in Korea. I was a soldier in the military and I was patrolling the DMZ at night and then in the daytime I'd come out and take pictures and we'd develop them. I was actually going on photography tours throughout all of Korea doing some really interesting shoots of the country. Have some really interesting stuff from back in the day. And that's when I really learned about the camera settings and what was possible as far as the f-stop, the, the, the aperture, the shutter speed, the ISO, and all the settings on your camera that, that a lot of people don't know about <laughs> in the modern day of photography. A lot of people just grab their cell phone or their point-and-shoot camera, they put it on automatic, and they start taking pictures. And let me tell you, if, if, if you're doing it that way, you can have pretty good success. But if you really understand the settings on your camera and what the potential is, how to make changes deliberately to your photographs, you can really do a lot more. And that's what I'm going to cover in this video. So I have about 320 videos on YouTube that I've been posting daily videos. In addition to the daily videos, I also have to take photographs for the thumbnails for YouTube. And that's kind of what really got me into photography lately. And recently I've been using this really cheap point and shoot camera. As a matter of fact, I have multiple copies. I bought six of these guys because I keep dropping them and breaking them. They're, they're, it's like a $400 camera about five years ago and now they're about 50 bucks. I picked some of these up for like 40 bucks and it's, it's a really easy way to start. I've actually transitioned out of these cameras. They're still really useful in case my main camera dies. <laughs> I have some backups, but what I'm using right now is a Canon 77D and it's, I guess it's considered kind of a semi-pro camera and, and and this particular camera it has um, <laughs> I don't know if I want to go too far into the camera settings but it has a crop factor of 1.6 so for example if I put a hundred millimeter lens on this particular camera it would appear as though it was a hundred and sixty millimeter lens because of the crop factor and it's, it's, it gets a little bit confusing once you get into the kind of the high end. This is considered a semi-pro camera and I want to show you on this camera some of the settings that I use, the, the ISO, the, the f-stop, and the shutter speed is, are really the three things that affect the quality and the, really what you're doing as far as is the, the performance of your photo, what you're really looking for. And I would say as a, as a photographer, you're really more of an artist. And everyone will say, oh yeah, yeah you, gotta, you gotta take a picture this way, you gotta do it this way. And most people, you know, I was, I was looking over a lot of these, you know, how to take pictures of your snakes, the videos on YouTube, and, and, and most of them, <laughs> they don't really go into the camera settings and how to really optimize the photography. A lot of people are just pulling out their cell phones, or I've actually seen where they'll take a, a camera like this, the 77D, they'll just put it on automatic and just start snapping away. And that's really not the way you want to do it. You really want to understand, you know, the shutter speed, the ISO, and the f-stop, or what they call the aperture. It's also called the speed of the lens. <laughs> it's a really fast lens. If you're able to really have a, have a really low f-stop, it brings a lot of light in, gives you a shallow depth of field. And I know it's it's really confusing at the beginning. And personally, when I'm taking pictures of snakes uh, with my Canon 77D, really what I like to do is put it in full manual mode and have complete control over all the settings. And let me go over some of those settings with you now and, and I'll kind of explain each one and we'll uh, explain you know what the setting is and what the effect is on the picture. Okay, so here is a snake that I want to take a picture of. I'm going to show you. I want to set it up on my table and it's, it's a little male pastel bamboo, a really cute snake, really good looking snake. And the, really what I want to do is I want to explain all of the camera settings one by one as I set this up. And first let's go over the ISO. So the ISO setting is really the sensitivity of the film in the camera. And you can take, 
You can take pictures in really dim light with a fast shutter speed if, if you have a really high ISO setting. The problem is if your ISO setting is really high, uh, what, what you eventually end up with is a really grainy picture. And personally, I like to keep my ISO between 100 and 400. I would say probably shooting in a room like this, I would probably set it on 400. Whoa, <laughs> that's a little snapper. He snapped at me. <laughs> oh, oh, did you see that? Woo, <laughs> this guy's fired up. Woo. Look at that, Ooh. <laughs> now that's really interesting. I've never actually seen a snake bite like that before. Wow, whoa, <laughs> all right, woo. Actually on this camera, I'm shooting in 60 frames per second. Oh, he got me that time. <laughs> I'm shooting in 60 frames per second. So I can actually slow down that footage and we can get some really cool slow motion because this camera shoots at 60 frames per second. I can slow it down to 24 frames per second and we can get some slow motion shots of the snake, which would be pretty cool. I'll do that at the end and we'll see this guy snapping in slow motion. But the thing you really wanna pay attention for is your ISO. So for example, if I set this camera on full automatic <laughs> <laughs> and and just start shooting pictures I can almost guarantee the ISO is going to be set to something higher than 400 it'll probably be like 800 or 1600 and the problem is you'll I, I've seen a lot of times you'll take a, you know a thousand dollar camera fifteen hundred dollar lens you get a twenty five hundred dollar setup you put it on automatic you start shooting pictures and let me tell you my little point and shoot does better on automatic than this Canon 77D. It's pretty incredible. You definitely don't want to go on full automatic if you can help it. So what I do is I'd go into program mode, which allows you to, for example, in program mode, you can actually set the ISO to 400 or even 100, and then the camera will adjust everything else to compensate. So, so for example, if you set it for an ISO of 100, what, what would happen is it would really slow down the shutter speed. So you'd have to have a snake that's not moving. You'd have to have the camera on a tripod. You get some really sharp, clean images, but you really can't have any movement at all. And that's kind of the, the disadvantage with the high ISO. So kind of a compensation would be to go to like ISO 400 in program mode and then you have a little bit of faster of a shutter speed and, and you can, and you can uh, kind of control it that way. The other thing is to go into full program mode and in full program mode you can set the ISO say to 400 and then you can also set your aperture. So for example, if you have a really low aperture or f-stop, what it does is it opens up the lens and it lets a lot of light into the camera so you can take pictures in, in a really dim environment. The problem is, is you get a really shallow depth of field. So for example, if you had like an f1.2 lens and you set, you cranked it all the way open to it's where it's f1.2, what would actually happen is, is if you're taking a picture of, of the snake, you might only get the tip of his nose in focus and the rest of the snake would be out of focus. So it really depends what you're shooting for, what kind of artistic quality you want in uh in your in your photographs and 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 personally i like i like a little bit more uh, more of the snake in focus ideally I would, I would say you'd probably want for you know for something really impressive you'd want the whole snake in focus and everything behind it out of focus so you'd really want to dial in the f-stop to where it's uh it really depends on your lens too but you know it's it, it really depends on what kind of a picture you want as far as the snake too so let me kind of set this up and i'll show you i'll show you what the camera looks like what i'm going to have to do is i'll have to switch to my little point and shoots and we'll kind of i'll kind of show you all my equipment i'll show you this camera because you really can't see it because i'm recording from this camera my point and shoot has pretty lower quality as far as video but you'll be able to see what my setup looks like all right so this is my canon 77d it's a pretty awesome setup I have a lens on here that does really well for for <laughs> a really small space like this it's actually an 18 
uh, 10 to 18 millimeters and remember it has a crop factor of 1.6 so the 10 millimeter is actually a 16 millimeter on this camera which is kind of weird if you took this lens you put it on a full frame camera it would actually be a, t a real 10 millimeter because a full frame camera has the full sensor size inside of it it's, it's it's a little bit complicated once you get into it and i have this little mic on top this is for my recording it's a shotgun mic just for recording my videos the thing i really like about it is this tilt screen <laughs> and and you can really control all of your settings right from the, the tilt screen here and you have your your little dial up on top you can go into automatic or manual or program mode a bunch of different modes and it's it's a really nice really powerful camera i would say it's probably the best bang for your buck for a semi-pro camera and the other thing i have is of course i have a couple of tripods you definitely need some tripods and i have a really nice camera case here with a bunch of different lenses I, I like to use my 50 millimeter portrait when I'm doing some s photography of my snakes sometimes. And uh, I also have my lighting set up here. And what I'm going to do first is I am going to set up this lighting and show you what that looks like. Alright, so here is the studio in my reptile room. I actually have three different light panels for three angles of lighting. And what that really does is it... it it pretty much cuts out the shadows so I don't have to use a flash and I don't get any shadows and it also allows me to really dial in my brightness and my color temperature so on these I can turn down the brightness and I also can change the color temperature uh, from 5600 Kelvin which is like a blue down to 3300 Kelvin which is like a yellow and about 45 is pretty much like a daylight and on my camera for settings I'm in total program mode and I can switch back and forth between my live preview here and my program mode and in program mode what I can do is I can hit the Q button go into my ISO and I can change whatever I want for my ISO you definitely want it between 400 and 100 if you put it on auto I would say it's pretty unpredictable as far as what it's going to do you can actually see it after the fact but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to actually set it on 400 and we'll take a picture of the snake and see what it looks like. So keep in mind here that you, I can actually crop the photo afterwards and to take a picture. <laughs> it's actually set on automatic where I can take multiple pictures at the same time. And this is pretty cool. You can just focus wherever you want. And if you just touch the camera, it actually focuses there and takes a picture, which is pretty neat. And I can also zoom in a little bit since I have the zoom lens. And we take another picture. <laughs> this is pretty neat. Focus right on the snout. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Those, those are really nice pictures. They'll come out really fantastic. I can go back into my menu. Um, and go into for example it's it's got a really nice touch screen too which is pretty neat so if I go back into let's see ah, let's go back into uh, the we're, we're at the live preview you have to hit actually hit the live preview button over here to go back into the settings and then the Q button it's <laughs> the menu is a little bit confusing once you get into it but we'll go back to an ISO of 100 go back into the preview take a couple more pictures on ISO 100 I really like the the live you touch it and take a picture I can also hit this button over here and if I hold it I have it set on automatic where it'll just keep shooting multiple pictures I think it's six pictures per sec six pictures per second which is pretty awesome. <laughs>
Okay, so that is the primer in photography for your reptiles. Hopefully this gave you some hints. There's a whole bunch of stuff that really you have to wrap your head around. And what I'm trying to do now is trying to rearrange these lights to have a better lighting for my videos. And it's, it's pretty tricky, especially for, you know, trying to do your videos and your photos with the lighting and the camera, the tripods, the equipment. It, it can get a little bit overwhelming between the ISO and the f-stop and, and all that stuff, the shutter speed. And, and I just barely touched on some of it in this video. This is the equipment that I have to, to work with and I'm really just kind of on the cutting edge of trying to learn and understand it and, and a good place to learn is to go on YouTube and really just kind of, especially if you commute a long distance to work, back and forth to work, you can, you can hook up your YouTube videos and just listen to a lot of these people talk about photography, the stock photos, you know, the different, you know, the macro photography, taking things, pictures up close, Close like your snakes there's just on and on and on it's almost like you're jumping into film school it's it's there's so much to learn and it's it's a really exciting part of the hobby especially if you're into reptiles there's not a lot of pictures that are really quality pictures on a lot of these stock photo places and I thought it was a neat little niche that I could jump into take a lot of really cool pictures maybe start making some money on the side from my pictures on some of these stock photography websites <laughs> so that's pretty much it thanks for watching i'll keep you up to date on more of this photography stuff as we go and i will see you in the next video